After more than a month of negotiating, President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure package cleared its first hurdle in a crucial test vote today. The Senate voted to begin debate on the bill. Final passage is uncertain, but lawmakers say they could work through the weekend to finish it. We don't know officially what's in the bill yet, but the White House said earlier today the agreement includes $110 billion for roads, bridges, and major projects, $73 billion for power grid spending, $65 billion to expand broadband access, $55 billion to, for clean drinking water, and $50 billion for environmental resiliency. When Biden first announced his infrastructure plan, he said that he wanted to use it to improve racial equity and environmental justice. Administration officials promised it would help reverse long-running racial disparities in how the government builds, repairs, and locates a wide variety of physical infrastructure. Some of the items that can, uh, plan included were $20 billion to reconnect communities of color that had been cut off by old transportation projects and $45 billion to replace every lead water pipe, like the ones that harm black children in cities like Flint, Michigan. It also included the Justice 40 initiative, one of the environmental components that directly targeted black and brown Americans. It's a program that would ensure 40% of the overall benefits from clean energy and climate change projects will be allocated to communities that historically haven't been invested in. So now that this package has cleared this key test vote, will we see a plan that makes good on that promise for the black community or will it fall short again? Joining me to discuss is the Dean of the College of Ethnic Studies at California State University at Los Angeles, Julianne Malvo. Julianne, thank you for being here. So, you know, it's, it's hard to know what's happening in this bill because there is no bill right? there's no word wording to read in an actual document but you know what do you think about what biden said you know back in april his aims were for this and what it looks like they're developing now will the black community see the same benefits that he said he was aiming to produce well charles first of all it's always great to be with you thank you for the invitation secondly no nah. <laughs> you know, in a word, no. Um, <laughs> they worked so hard to get this compromise that I don't think that they're going to go back and include racial justice in here. Uh, when you look at this legislation, there's much of it that's very good, especially because we know that our infrastructure is crumbling. But where is the targeting in terms of employment? Uh, as you say, they haven't talked about that yet. That should be a central tenet of anything they talk about. In addition, there are two pieces of legislation going. One is this particular bill, infrastructure. The other is the budget bill, which is about three times as large. Uh, that particular bill must have some concessions or some allowances for the black community. And I don't see that happening. Now, you see Christian Cinema, Joe Manchin, they came along the way, Sue Collins, they sort of walked down the prickly path to infrastructure but they're not gonna jump the broom for black folks. And so what we're gonna end up with, I think, is um, the inequities that we've seen over and over and over again. More importantly, or equally importantly, when you go for a, this is a bill that is heavily uh, focused on men. Who does construction? Men. Uh, so women, uh, white women, Latino women, but especially black women are peripheralized for this. And why do I mention that today, Charles? Because August 3rd, about a week from now, is a Black Women's Pay Equity Day. So these black women who put their hind parts on the line for this president are going to find themselves at the periphery of any recovery unless something special happens. Could, could it be, you know, I'm just trying to see if there's any silver lining in this. Could it be that some of the proposal have just gotten renamed? You know, so there's, there, there's the, the, the chunk of money in there about uh, clean water. Is that a repackaging of the lead pipe uh, replacement and re removal and replacement? Or is that a whole other thing about fields and streams? Well, no, I think that that's, there are places where you could parse out 
pennies here and pennies there. Certainly, uh, one of the goals was to remove every lead pipe from this country. And, you know, we still have them. I mean, we don't need to talk about Flint. We could talk about Washington, D.C. or New York City, where you still have lead pipes at our schools and other places. So, yes, that goal is a very laudable goal. Um, and I support it fully. We all do. But the failure to address frontally the ways that inequities are affecting our people is frightening because really it says again, going back to Black Women's Pay Equity Day, these women, uh, Latasha Brown, Melanie Campbell, let me call the role, who went out to make this man president, their communities and their concerns are being peripheralized. So uh, what do you think just in terms of the pure politics of this thing passing? You know, a procedural vote to go ahead with debate is one thing. Voting to actually <laughs> approve $2 trillion or whatever, how I many ever trillion dollars is a whole other thing. I am not, it's not clear to me that Christian Sinema is on board with that. So you may not even have enough Democratic votes. Uh, you may not have the entire Democratic coalition. And in the House, members there are already bucking about this, saying that it's not, doesn't include all of the things that they thought that it should. Does this, does this bill, as it stand, have a chance? It has a chance, but it doesn't have a great chance. Um, for Bernie Sanders, of course, leading budget, is that happy about what's in the bill? Um, here's, a, here's the bottom line, Charles. Can they compartmentalize their brains and say, let's do infrastructure and wait for budget? And many Democrats are not up for that because we waited too long, too often, and say, oh, this is better. So many Democrats are like, uh-uh, not this time. And so that becomes, can you compartmentalize? And then even if you can compartmentalize, can you get the cinemas and the mansions to behave? Because as far as I'm concerned, they have not behaved uh, since they got elected. I mean, they do what they feel like. They, they buck up against the party. They want the party to support them, but they're not supporting the party or the people. And this is who we're ignoring in this. Even Republicans, even not all Republicans, but certainly even Republicans, are saying, we need to fix our infrastructure. We need to do more about care, health care, elder care, all of those things. Because from COVID, people have lived it. They've lived it and they lived it hard. But meanwhile, you have this ideological nonsense using basically budget balancing as a baseball bat against justice. And that's where we are. Julianne Malvo, always uh, amazing on the show. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate your.